スーパーランダムジャパン。なに Are you sick of old fashioned step for step choreography of a typical action film, aside from a few outliers like John Wick, The Raid, and a dozen others that are few and far between? Well, look no further than Baby Assassins, or Baby Wadukure in Japanese, one and two. While not perfect by any means, which I'll address in my assessment, films, especially the first, are a wonderful example of pure entertainment, in my opinion, which doesn't mean much, but hey, I might convince someone. So, if you're looking for a badass girl or girls who don't have over idealized agendas and simply truly kick ass while still having weaknesses and personality flaws, yet are exciting and at times pretty dang funny to watch, then these films are for you. First off, let me explain that these films spun off from the Yugo Sakamoto film A Janitor, which I don't really recommend that much. The action isn't nearly as good, and the stars of Baby Assassins aren't done justice. They're just minor characters who aren't even that impressive. That's all I'll say, as I don't want to spoil that film, even though I don't really recommend it, especially because it ruins Baby Assassins. I know the two Baby Assassin movies had the same choreographer or action director as they did each other, but not sure who oversaw A Janitor. I try to separate the films as two different universes. Anyway, as for Baby Assassins, it stars Mahiro and Chisato, two very different but perfectly complementary girls, graduating high school and transitioning from being part time assassins to full time professionals. This transition comes with challenges and new rules than they're used to, one of them being that they're required to live together, and the other being more adult like responsibilities like paying rent and taxes, etc., as well as getting new part time jobs to fit into this society. And to have a cover for their jobs as assassins. Not only do the girls differ in personalities, but also specialties. While they both know hand to hand combat and weapons, they prefer to specialize differently. Chisato, played by Akari Takaishi, is the gunman, or gunwoman. She prefers shooting, and the more firepower, the better. Her personality is over the top, being super cute at times, super bubbly at other times, or just super crazy, and you never know what she'll be and when. This is often curved perfectly by her counterpart. Mahiro, played by Saori Izawa, is the cool headed hand to hand and melee weapon expert. While she's highly analytical and a self admitted sociopath, it's clear neither personality can thrive on its own. Mahiro, due to her non existent social skills, finds it impossible to do anything within society other than kill. But not without trying. Chisato, on the other hand, gets along with almost anyone, but she's so naive and such a loose cannon, it means any worthwhile relationship she has, and job for that matter, is short lived. Not only does this make them an oddly effective duo, but makes their relationship, especially when living together, extra entertaining. This, however, is where I'll pause to make a few complaints about Baby Assassins. The movies spend a lot of time just watching the two girls live and interact together, and it is highly entertaining at times, not to mention integral for witnessing their rapport, but often is overly drawn out. Like a live stream, I enjoy just experiencing personalities and interactions, but also like a live stream, many moments are hit or miss. If you don't like their personalities, then they all miss. Plus, this is a film, and thus there's a time limit. I want them to hurry it along. And get back to the action. Also, one of the key villains of the first film is almost a mirror image of Chisato. While this makes for an interesting and humorous back and forth between them, it'll turn anyone off who may already dislike Chisato's erratic behavior. While it's only two characters, some women or people in general might just see them as bubbling idiots. Not me though, I enjoyed it, but still, it's a setback when the plot is as thin as Baby Assassins is. While the films don't have an overly developed plot, the first one did a better job of having puzzle pieces connect well enough, as well as having fairly worthwhile villains and motives. 
The second was a bit looser while still entertaining. The movies are more about entertainment than the story in my opinion, and there it surely does deliver, while not being everyone's cup of tea. If you like dark comedies, however, it's for you. In addition to the protagonists and antagonists, even the employees at the assassin organization are interesting, like the girl's boss, who is always frustrated with their immaturity, as well as their appointed cleaner team, who are always trying to get them to be smarter assassins and less messy. Between the wild personalities of all the characters, the show is just flat out fun, I think. Especially when it comes to the action, particularly the finales, again, especially in the first film. We're talking peak action sequences, even for A-list movies. Sadly, while shows like Warrior and Into the Badlands are still quite good, they and many like them just seem to have somewhat generic fight choreography and or cliche action. I know TV shows don't have the budget of film franchises like John Wick and the Raid movies for example, but still such gems are hard to find. Don't worry though because Baby Assassin sure delivers. Anything it lacks in story it more than makes up for in action. For one, Saori Izawa is first and foremost a stunt woman even appearing in John Wick 4, so you know she knows her stuff and is more than convincing to being a top tier fighter. Many of the other actors are stunt people too or just have awesome stunt people for these films. Again, the choreography is on point, even making for convincing hand versus gun fights, etc. In contrast, as much as I'm looking forward to the upcoming One Percenter film, the trailer had me skeptical as the whole premise of that film is about a stuntman looking for real action. I think Baby Assassins did way better based on the footage the trailer showed, but I'll judge that when I actually see it, but I digress. The main point is, go watch Baby Assassins. I highly recommend them, especially if you want something that's just fun to watch with great action sequences. Will they win any major awards? No. They could very likely become called classics though. That's all I have for now. Let me know what you thought or if you have any similar recommendations. Thanks for tuning in. Later.